Hello again everyone, Jonathan here. I'm coming back and it's time to do part two of this Axis and Allies 1914 out of the box rules strategy uh, series. So last video, just a quick recap, we talked about the main things that are different and we talked uh, a little bit about Austria-Hungary. Now before we get into the other central powers, uh, there is something kind of an overarching thing that I want to mention. So we know that it's going to take us longer to get units to the front. So we're going to look at each of the central powers really quick and see are they going to be effective against the east or against the west. So we talked a little bit about Austria and how Vienna is located right in the middle they can just as easily get units here as they can over here. It's going to take them the same number of turns to get to Venice, uh, the bordering Italian territory, versus getting to uh, Ukraine or Poland or Romania. Romania is not a, not a core territory for them. It's a neutral. But to get to the front, it's going to take them an equal amount of time. So they are equipped. They could go either east or west. They're equally equipped for that. Now the Ottomans are in an interesting position. They, they really can't do anything uh, on the Western Front. It's going to take them a crazy number of turns to get up there, assuming they don't have transports. Usually the Allies uh, control the seas, and uh, they definitely have more surface ships to start with. So it's going to take a while if the Central Powers do want to try and control the seas. Assuming that isn't a game that you're trying to play and that the Allies... Um, or if you you do try to do it, the allies stop you, um, we're, we're basically going to take that off the table. So let's say from Constantinople to Bulgaria is one, either uh, let's say Serbia two, Trieste three, Triolia four. By the time we get to Switzerland, assuming we don't need those troops for anything else, which is unlikely, America's already in the war. So the Ottomans pretty much have to be focused on the eastern front over here. The Ottomans also have an issue because of the slow movement that they are even more in danger of a joint allied naval attack because the allies can hit a bunch, excuse me, a bunch of different locations. Um, on the upside, England isn't able to move into Persia and then just keep zipping guys to Mesopotamia, but the Ottomans can't zip guys to Mesopotamia either. So the Ottomans, as always, are in kind of a difficult position. The only place really they can, only thing they can really do is try and defend and move into Russia. Uh, so that's, that's all they can do based on their starting location. Now Germany, uh, Berlin up here, is in a much better position to go after Russia than it is France. If it wants to go after France, it's going to have to move into... Uh, either Kiel, Ruhr, Alsace to get here, or maybe Kiel, Ruhr, Belgium to go here, or Hanover, Munich, Alsace. Actually, that's an even worse one. Uh, based on where they place their units, they can move over this way much more easily. Now, if we are truly playing out-of-the-box rules, those do say that for the Central Powers to win, they have to take two Allied capitals, one of which must be Paris. And if we have the United States coming in, reinforcing, um, the, the U.S. comes in on turn four, so they're going to be dropping guys off uh, very quickly thereafter in the next turns, this is going to be about impossible. So if you aren't playing with that rule, the Central Powers really are better equipped to go after Russia the Ottomans have to. Austria could go either way. Germany definitely uh, is equipped to do that. However, if you have to take out uh, Paris, I mean, that's contingent for your victory if, if you and your friends who are playing don't want to alter that rule and just say, any two capitals, um, then you've got to do something. You've got to try and take out France quickly. And so I'm going to recommend the kind of a Schlieffen plan sort of thing. So I talked a little bit about the Austrians you know, kind of coming over here, Germany maybe moving into Switzerland to try and put pressure on Italy, and that the Central Powers strategy 
really is going to, between these two countries coordinating, is going to be to put pressure here and across here. And by having their armies together, um, Germany won't be able to reinforce much. Maybe on the first turn it moves the guys from Berlin, start sending them this way. But otherwise, um, it's going to be limited to you know it, what it has to start with in this area. Uh, these units over here are going to be for Russia. Um, Austria can keep sending units, and it's going to need to if it wants to, if the Central Powers want to take out France. Um, so, and they're going to need to to definitely coordinate heavily. Now, this is going to mean that England is probably going to reinforce here rather than dumping uh, everything or close to it over in India. So, maybe in a way that makes this a little bit more historical, but. If you do have to take Paris, you do want to move on it as quickly as possible, and that means pressure on Italy and moving this way. Germany and Austria are just going to have to work together uh, to do that. Now, if you aren't playing that you have to take Paris, uh, if just any two capitals will do, then I would recommend you know putting some sort of pressure on Italy, but then using the German units that you start with, kind of like in this area, maybe Hanover as well, to come over here, uh, Belgium and Alsace, um, just like in, kind of in a tournament game, build your defenses there. But you're probably not going to move into Switzerland. Um, you're probably, as Austria, going to just keep stalemating in Venice while sending everything else you can this way. And then the Ottomans, of course, are going to come up this way. If the... Uh, central powers are going after France, then the Ottomans' job, in addition to staying alive, is to try and keep this front uh, solid. Um, Austria is not going to basically come up this way and try and fortify Austria, because after the first turn, Germany, it's going to take them too long to get their units over here, so Germany is going to be able to hold this front probably. The Austrians, though, can keep moving guys over here to deal with France and Italy, um, so the Ottomans are going to be needed to come up here and kind of reinforce uh, Austria if the Central Powers are going after France. If the Central Powers are going after Russia, then of course, as always, the Ottoman strategy is to stay alive. Um, that's always the strategy for them. But if they have additional forces, then they're going to try and help the best that they can up this way uh, to get into Russia. Um, Africa, there's not a whole lot of production. If there's an opening, then certainly they can come down here. If uh, England really isn't putting anything hardly in India and, and the Ottomans are building up, you could move into Persia. But for the most part, I think that's going to be better served as a buffer. Um, if, if the Ottomans don't open this up, or if neither side opens this up, that is going to help the Ottomans because it means a huge British force isn't going to move across. Um, if the British move in, then the Ottomans definitely need to be paying attention to this front over here because they can't get units over here very quickly. So that is my take as the Central Powers, depending on where you want to go against France, which is going to be probably a more difficult because Germany, the country with the strongest economy on the Central Powers side, really of any country in this game, can't reinforce this front very easily. And that's potentially a, a big problem. Um, but if you've got to take uh, France, if you got to take Paris to win, then you're going to have to at least try to go after that. If you wait too long, if the U.S. is in the war and they're dumping troops over here, uh, you're never going to be able to get it. If you agree to modify that rule and say France isn't necessary, it's going to be much easier for the central powers to go after Russia. It'll take a little longer because of the movement rules, but since the US isn't coming in the war uh, as early as it would in tournament, you do have a little bit more time, but time is of the essence. And so even though the US isn't coming in for one more round, uh, you can't dawdle. You have gotta be laying the pressure on Russia. You have gotta knock them out. Um, to uh, either to revolution if you're going to play it that way or uh, just you know conquer them so that you can start moving your units back this way so that is my take um, and a quick summary of this video for the central powers i hope you guys enjoy it 
uh, or have enjoyed it um, up till this point. Um, I will try and get a strategy video on the allies up here shortly.